everyone. I hope God's been blessing you today. Today is still February 4th, 2023. And I'm here with my husband today and we're going, I'm going to interview him so you can understand his side of the story on what happened with us with the um, Jehovah Witnesses. So the first thing I'm going to ask is, why don't you tell everyone, um, what did you know about Jehovah Witnesses before you ever were ex ex decided to accept a Bible study? The only thing I knew about them was, from what we heard growing up, is that either they were a cult or like a crazy religion and things like that. But other than that, I really didn't know much about them because I didn't know really any of them. I mean, the, the, I guess it's a common thing that people don't really know them because they uh, isolate themselves. So, Okay. And so why were you interested in listening to the witnesses when they finally came to our door? It was 2018 and I was having a spiritual awakening. And um, so I was very open and open to discussing theology and I wanted to know more about God. And I was curious as to what, you know, was really in the Bible. So um, they knocked on the door and asked me, do you know what God's name is? And I'm like, I don't know. It's God, right? <laughs> and I said, no, it's Jehovah. And then they handed me that book. Was it? Uh, uh, what can the Bible teach us? Yes, yeah, what can the Bible <laughs> teach us? Um, and then they asked if they could come back. And I was like, yeah, sure. You know, I'll like to talk to you sometime. But, like, I probably could have just talked that day. Like, I didn't really understand. Like, I just responded well to them. And they, like, hurry up and took off. So I found that a little odd. And I just brushed it off and went about it. I was like, well, that's kind of good, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I did want to talk to them, but they took off and is what it is that's funny um so when we first started studying what did you actually like about the organization in the beginning i wasn't really paying attention to the organization aspect of it because like i said i wanted to get to know about god um and so that's what i was really looking for in it was to you know to understand what i was going through and to strengthen my relationship with god um so i i was more concerned about that um when we started studying it seemed nice it seemed like average agreeable things because they would always ask you well don't you agree no well, we can all agree with that right and um so i i did notice that they would have a bunch of things that are absolutely agreeable. I mean, if you kind of go along, you'd be pretty much crazy or something. Um, but they would slip every once in a while, they'd slip something in there that you didn't really agree with. Say, so you agree with like, you know, like 92% of the stuff. So you're like, well, you know, that's not so big of a deal. But I noticed they kept doing that over over and over again over the time and I'm like, yeah. And it, it started to get like weirder things like we have to just listen to what the governing body says if it doesn't make sense. And I'm like, yeah, that, that's not gonna happen for me. So I remember when um when we started studying and we had asked about, you know, um the CSA. Oh, yeah. And um what they had told us, you know, because I specifically was telling them in my video, like I went through that as a child and I really wanted to know. And I think now, did you already know about the, the actual congregation we were in before we asked or did, did we just ask about that? I can't, I can't remember which came first. Did we find out about it after they had told us that that never happened or did you already know i 
I had heard of one of the articles, but I didn't go on to Faith Leaks at the time. Mm -hmm. But I did after. Mm -hmm. And um after we had asked them. Yeah, look, oh. I knew the story, but I didn't go, I didn't like rifle through the documents until after because I'm like, oh, you know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and look at these. And uh right. <laughs> I mean I feel bad for them. They I know they didn't really want to handle it the, the way the branch told them to handle it. Uh, uh, was it legal department? Uh, yeah. They didn't... <laughs> the, the two-witness rule is really not a good deal. Mm -hmm. um, especially when it comes to that. And they went through that firsthand. And uh, look, I don't know how they can sit there and like watch the talks where they... Stephen Lent said, uh, you know, it's apostate-driven lies that they protect pedophiles and that recently the other guy gave the the talk about how they they contact the secular authorities you know and uh they they didn't they didn't do that and the documents got leaked from yeah. somebody that was in that congregation at the time too leaked them and um of course that person's got this fellowship too right um well, I've been yeah. linking, I'm going to link what he's talking about. I'm going to link the, um, all the cases, all the, um, websites in the description box. You guys can look at it yourself if you want to. Um, and I can also link the actual letter that was leaked from our congregation about like the fact that the pure fact that I asked specifically <laughs> if that happened and the and the person that was studying with us was an elder and for him to have say um no if it did happen we would just call the authorities but then we see the paper that says that they didn't they don't do that that's not even what they do mm -hmm. so it's kind of shocking so let me ask um let's see so okay so as we're studying and everything, did I just noticed that you said some of the stuff, like 92% of the things that you were, you know, studying with them, you were like, all right, this makes sense. I never, I didn't, there was never like um 8% for me. I believed everything <laughs> that was going on. I believed every single thing. So I guess... I was going to ask you, like, did you believe everything that they taught us when we were studying? But now you kind of just answered that. I didn't even know that you, you already, so at the beginning, you were already thinking that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so why didn't you say anything to me at the beginning? Well, we did talk about that a couple of times. Um, well, we did say we weren't never going to go to the door, door to door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it, I think it was like how they kept saying we have to follow the organization's direction and just basically the, the attention was always on the organization and i'm like i i knew that was off um what's the other thing that uh, and how they treat disfellowship people uh -huh. and mm -hmm. oh I, yeah that was I one of my questions didn't agree with that it, or like non -wit, you know non witness family members like i'm not going to not talk to my lifelong family members because of an organization, because that's culty. I'm sorry, it's culty. I'm not sorry, it's culty. <laughs> Shame on you. That was one of <laughs> that was actually one of my questions. Like, how did you feel about the disfellowship and arrangement at the beginning when I first was studying? I think we started to study that when we had already split apart, mm -hmm. where it wasn't no longer all four of us, um, and when you know the wife was doing it with me and they had brought up, you know, the disfellowshipment at the beginning when they were bringing up the criteria during the study. I mean, they use common sense things. Okay. If you're, if your family members are, you know, killed someone, 
you know i mean stuff like that's ridiculous like stuff that you don't why would i even want to hang around with these people so right. yeah i kind of understand that but they never mentioned anything about you know little things like if you ask questions <laughs> you know what would happen so before we get into that how long were you in the organization um we studied basically well almost five years i think yeah, yeah. we were at, we were associated with them for four years but i was only baptized in like oh, yeah, maybe yeah. a year and a half yeah you got back total, in 21 and, right yeah um all right so why did you get baptized well <clears throat> funny you should ask because i i really had to ask myself <clears throat> that right before like right when they asked me the questions i'm like i think i just did the wrong thing <laughs> but i did i got baptized because I owe God my life, right? And it is what it is with that. Um, however. So you did it, regret, because that's one of my questions. Did you regret the baptism? Yes, because did I didn't I didn't really understand, or I don't think I noticed during your baptism, like I didn't the either. questions that they that yeah. were going to ask me right before mm -hmm. I did it. And... Um, I was asked if I recognize the governing body as Jehovah's faithful uh, and discreet. Slave. Yeah. And I wanted to say no. <laughs> so I lied. Oh I my god. Absolutely lied. Well, you know what? Because I don't I I didn't, but like I was on the spot then. I didn't think I was gonna get asked that question because I really didn't believe it. But I did lie because I did want to get baptized and dedicate my life to god yeah um however i didn't realize that that wasn't going to happen anyway and basically i was making an oath to uh organization a, yeah an organization instead of really to god we didn't realize the, that at all because we i remember when you had first mentioned that when we were studying just the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I remember specifically the whole account with um, the eunuch and Philip, who was running alongside the eunuch. And he said, do you know what you're reading? And the eunuch said, well, how would I know that? You know, and then he explained to him like the whole thing about Jesus. And when they went to they were going by a body of water and the eunuch said, there's water right there. What's stopping me from getting baptized? I thought to myself, oh my goodness, why do we have to be approved to be baptized by a, a company Control. that's, yeah, I didn't realize that though. And though I will say this, I don't think I'm pretty, I know that God knows that we wanted to be baptized because we actually finally found a yeah. relationship with him and then we thought we were doing the truth the truth you know we yeah it, it's not our fault and it's nobody's fault anybody that's in this and is trying to get out of it and they're having like a hard time believe me my husband got out of it months before i even i was going back and forth so i understand the the tug of war that's in your head because it was in my head and i thought i was going to disappoint god if i left and i thought he was wrong and i thought they were wrong and i didn't know if i was wrong and i just it was it's terrible we know there's a whole community of people it isn't just the the witness organization like there's so many people that i listen to on youtube that love god just as much as we do even i don't understand why a an actual religion would think that they're the like they literally say oh we're the only truth yet like you said every religion thinks they're the only truth yes, ten thousand yeah and they all think they have the truth so you know i don't know uh let's let's move on because i could get all, all right it's all right i'll be all um 
did you feel differently after you were baptized by the people in the hall? Yeah, I, I do. Um, I think once, once it got baptized, they weren't so excited you were there. Now you were in and they figured you're locked in. So it's almost like, like when abusers, uh, they they figure that you know they they got you now and then they just start their process um mm -hmm. it did seem weird it did <clears throat> uh change the dynamic definitely changed um it got worse don't you think when covid started when we could go yeah. when, when we wouldn't wear a mask and they were like really pushing the masks. They really were mad at us that we wouldn't wear our masks. Like, yeah, they really were very, mad. Um, they were really mad. They were very pro vaccine. But I don't know, which is fine. Like, yeah, they can I, have by all what, means. What I didn't understand is we weren't telling them that they didn't need to wear a mask, mm -hmm. but they were very upset that we would not wear a mask and they would make us feel like crap. Because yeah. we decided with our own conscience, our own free will, we decided not to get the vaccine. I work in the medical field. I love I know a lot more than what people think that happens with these vaccines. I had too much information. I'm not gonna take something. It's my choice, just like it's everyone else's choice. I don't care if you took the vaccine. Like it doesn't bother me as long I don't right? I yeah. don't care. Like, I don't care if they took it. I don't care if anyone listening to this took it. Good. Like, if you, that thing, if you wearing a mask makes you guys feel better, I'm not going to tell you not to wear it. Do it and if you tell me, listen, I really need you to wear a mask. Maybe if we're going into your house and, or we're, you know, going into a car. Yeah, I'll wear it just to make you guys feel better. But if you're in my house <laughs> or I'm in a place where like a huge store i'm not wearing a mask just it wasn't gonna happen but anywho right next question all right so um how did you feel about being told okay so here's where yeah, we're we start really stuff. we started <laughs> to realize that we could not look into the organization's older publications explain that oh <laughs> <clears throat> well all right the funny thing is um it was during covid and uh i really i, I really wanted to um like study and know like the history of the the watchtower you know, um, so I, I looked it up. At first, it started off at, like Wikipedia, and I was just looking at, looking at the date, like when it originally started, because it was like what, 1874 something like that. Um, so <clears throat> really early, and I've always been interested in like that time era, um, and even uh, like the World War eras, like World War One and Two. And so I was looking at that and I realized that they were around a long time. And then I was curious as to what they had for watchtowers in World War II. Yeah. Um, what they were telling people. Yeah, I just wanted to see, like, you know. Because you like history. Yeah, I You're... like the history. And I've, you know, it was just something that it's like a historical era. And mm. that's information, like it would be cool to look at right so and um when i started looking on the app um i noticed it only went back to 1950. so i was curious and <clears throat> asked during uh field service one day if there was anywhere i could find those and possibly like check them out look at them um and instantly like <laughs> the eyes lit up like mm, well, why do you want to know that and I was like, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's a historical stuff mm -hmm. from like a time era. Like, I mean, like, this is Jehovah's organization. This is God. This is like 
his information that he's giving to you guys. Yeah. Like, shouldn't they have? Yeah, shouldn't it, they have a copy of it? Right. It should be a book in the Bible if it's really his words. Mm -hmm. Um. <clears throat> so, did they? He didn't want me to see those for some reason, and I think he had some. He, did, and he was very the... reluctant to. Well, he said he was gonna. Yeah. He said he was gonna give you some. So yeah. You look, but they never. Every time we went to a meeting, he forgot them. Yeah, he was he reluctant. He them. didn't yeah. want me mm -hmm. to see those for some reason, mm -hmm. and I know why now. But right. uh, he didn't want me to see them. But what they did say I should do is go to the Holocaust Museum instead. Yep. Mm -hmm. they were, I, I kind of felt like they were hiding something. So then I decided, well, maybe I can find more information about it online somewhere else. And then <clears throat> I started running across like the old PDFs of the early books from uh, Rutherford and Russell. Which you... <laughs> <laughs> Let me stick my head over here. Fornicator. <laughs> Adorable. Look at these. Look at these two. I mean, they always, they always have to, get, they always have to get in the picture. Um. All right. So, what did you think? All right. What was your first reaction to when we first heard about the faithful and discreet slave? are the governing body members like can you remember like when you first heard that and yeah. what did you think about that well i, I <laughs> like i was saying i was trying to give them the benefit of the doubt but something like that is always a grand claim claims of grandeur um and especially when the saying you have to listen to them you should really stop and take a look because that's the red flag right there um because i <clears throat> i was never one to believe that from any organization or anybody so uh, it was just <clears throat> highly doubtful and and how they came to that conclusion that they are with the uh, 1914 it was supposed to be armageddon but it didn't happen mm -hmm. and they still teach that <clears throat> but they don't think it's a false prophecy even though it failed um they just then, think they got new life yeah and they changed the date <clears throat> because that was just the return of jesus when he returned invisibly which is provable right because mm. we know that that's what they say we know mm. he found him feeding right hot in one spiritual food in 1919 I was like, okay, so where's the proof? Like, how that's, do they know that? Where's, where's, where's where, this, that's, what I want, that's what I want to know. Where's this 1919 material? So I started looking for that. Mm -hmm. And like, come on, guys, really, really, bro. That is so. Was uh, that your anyway. was that your red flag? Was that was that the thing when you started to search for the just the actual history? You were mm -hmm. just being curious, not yeah. like you were trying to be an apostate yeah. or anything like that. Um, you were literally just curious and you want because you wanted to know. I mean, seriously, if you think about it, there's one of the watchtowers that says that we as Jehovah Witnesses should like examine no, religion, yeah, then. examine everything well, about ourselves. That's what well, they tell other people no, to but, examine but, their religion. Yeah, and we and they want us to be it. Like, if someone was to come up to us and be like, "Hey, how come you believe this? Is, you have the truth." Well, don't you want to have all the information that you possibly can get in order to make that decision that you think you have the actual truth? But it seemed like we, you were starting to be curious and asking questions just so you could get rid of your doubt. Yeah, and, and plus, it I, turned into a huge yeah. If I'm going to be part of this organization and I'm supposed to be having faith in this, like, shouldn't I have a reason to have faith in it, mm -hmm. or just just because they think I should? Well, no, I started looking into it. Yeah. Huh. So, um. All right, so what gave you the courage, do you think, to leave? Like, what? because I know that you started to, 
I know at the beginning you started to doubt yourself. Like you started to be like, hey, like, or did you do that? Because I know I doubted myself. I started to think I was wrong. Like every, when they would say, I think because uh, at the everything. beginning they yeah. would tell me I was wrong. And then I just kind of was used to that anyway. So I just assumed. Yeah, like, what do I know? I didn't yeah, the yeah exactly. Stuff. Because they all, like I was saying in my last video, a lot of people in our congregation have been in for decades, have been in there for generation after generation after generation. And who am I to come in, never read the Bible before. And now I've only been reading it for, you know, five years. I didn't think I had any knowledge close to what they had. Well, because they always tell you, you know, oh, you're still, you know, baby milk. You're still on the baby milk and we're mature. Uh, you know, Christians, we've been doing this forever. But I don't think that's not what Jesus meant. He didn't mean that, you know, there's a parable where he said some of the people came in last and they still got, wasn't it the parable about the people that were going to work for the slave and he got people all throughout the day and the people that came in last, they still got the same amount of money. And then the people that were there all day were mad. Well, that's what Jesus is trying to say. I might have come in five years, just five years, but I'm, I'm, I have the desire to learn. I have the desire, the will. I want to know more. And it tells, it says the whole time we were there, it kept, they kept saying, you should listen to younger ones. You, the younger ones should listen to older ones. Well, it seemed like I would try to tell people what I thought of things and they didn't want to hear anything that I would say. They knew everything. Yeah. yeah. And which is what they were saying not to do. They were literally doing things and then they were saying things and doing the opposite, which was a red flag for me. One of the other things I started um, cross-referencing scriptures to, you know, dig more into them because some reason I didn't trust their Bible yeah. because they changed just the amount of changes they made in it. And that, that's the other thing I started to uh, start looking for is the changes in there and picking them apart. Mm -hmm. um, unbelievable. Yeah. So do you feel like <laughs> once you started to realize everything, um, what's the thing that gave you courage enough to say something because i know you know what was the final push for you after asking them because i know you know we went we had shepherd calls and mm. all that and you know like you're going to the principal's office again, yeah but well the thing was um i knew enough where i knew they were absolutely full of shit um that it's made up. It's, you know, um, the thing was, was, now that I knew that stuff, um, I couldn't go knock on somebody's door and try to convince them to get in when I just wanted out. And that was it. Um, yeah, so I couldn't do it. I couldn't sit there and lie to somebody and try to trick them into a cult like mm -hmm. that's not that wasn't in my heart i couldn't i couldn't mentally go come home and sleep at night after you know doing that so i was like no way i'm i'm leaving whatever and i told them what i found out and of course they just let They're me talk yet. probably didn't even listen to any of it and basically you know they tried to like blindside you with scriptures oh let me read you this and then then the other guy asks you a question and then they just keep going back and forth and try to you know scramble the old egg <laughs> and uh i let him do that and i'm like yeah i'm still leaving so and he, you know of course they begged me oh no don't and uh so he gave me a week to think about it and I I could not want want to even go back at all. So yeah, so I left. Yeah. So 
do you miss any part of the organization at all? Um, I missed a couple of the people, but then again, I didn't really connect with them all because we had just really started. They're not very, um, really people that want to hang out. They're very, probably because they're too judgmental. Yeah. And they, you know, basically they're just examining you all the time and I'm like, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, I agree with that. That's, I don't know. I don't want to hang out with people like that. It's boring as shit. Um, they're not, you know, and every other word out of the mouth is Jehovah. It, that gets super annoying. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, not sorry as well. Like, just cut it out with that. It's annoying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, how, let me ask you this now that, now that you're out, yeah. because according to being disfellowshipped, you are no longer, you know, going to be saved by Jehovah. And so how do you feel about God well, now? Oh, well, the way I feel about God now is I don't think that the God they worship is the real God. I think they have a mixed deity that they worship as God. And I believe that it, like it's a collective like egregor, it's called um this is a like a thought form entity, kind of like Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny. So you have their faithful and discreet slave, which is one of those, because they all collectively think that they really are, you know, Jehovah's well, Line, voice, yeah. Yeah, yeah, his channel. Um, mm -hmm. That in the org, JW.org, the organization, yeah. as Jehovah's organization, is also its own type of entity. Mm. And, and do you uh, think the governing body is also one? Well, that, that's or that's faithful the faithful. Yeah. Oh, so they kind of connect them two together. Yeah. And then the other one would be what, Jehovah? himself like the name jehovah because yeah. i feel like yeah. that's definitely so, so they something have a trinity which is kind of funny the because trinity they don't believe of, in it of like three different mm. entities that they follow and worship mm. so how do you feel about now that we know now that we know that we should actually the only way to god is through jesus yeah. like how do you feel about them barely ever talking about jesus the whole like i know the whole time like i barely heard except for when we were going to go to the memorial yeah i think that's the only time really they they start bringing over i noticed they they've been putting out yeah. a little bit of jesus more now. jesus here and there mm -hmm. but that's usually i guess i it is the memorial's coming though yeah that's in retrospect I... it seems common that they they start mentioning it more around the memorial time mm. and then after that yeah. right back into organization 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 yeah. faithful and discreet slave mm. you know watchtower jehovah's people jehovah's people just constant um but but them um really kind of ignoring jesus you know and worries me yeah, well, here's the thing. They uh they they believe in the ransom, you know, that Jesus died for us for uh you know forgiveness of sin. Mm -hmm. And like but when he was on the on the cross, not the torture stake, or whatever you want to call it, you call it a torture stake it doesn't mean it has to be one single straight up and down pole. Right. Whatever it is. Oh boy. Whatever it was that he was on, he still died for yeah. all of us. So he died for all of us, and he said, it is finished. He didn't say, well, this is good enough for now. I'm going to appoint a faithful and discreet slave after 1919, and you're going to have to earn your salvation through them because, you know, God just got it wrong yeah, and put me to death for no reason, really, right. when he could have just had a publishing company that you could have got salvation for so there's a huge problem that um yeah. i yeah and i think it's terrible that they consider themselves christians when they deny him so much and consider the the faithful and the sweet slave like his replacement 
uh, as a mediator mm -hmm. for us, which mm -hmm. is. No yeah, because I, what did they say? We you can't we cannot understand the Bible. I remember talking to one of the elders when no. it was my turn to leave, and he clearly said to me, "Do you think that you can have a relationship with Jehovah on your own?" And I was like, "Yeah," and he said, "Well, you can't. You're not going to be saved." And I was like, "Well, you could think that all you want," but mm -hmm. he was like, "You." The only way that we can be saved is through the faithful and discreet slave. We don't know how to understand the Bible. And I was like, you might not know how, but I use Jesus to help me. He helps me because he's my mediator. That's what he says. You he's know, funny thing about that is um, they had rewritten their Bible because they got it all figured out. Mm. So they re rewrote it like, what, twice? Because the other one... <laughs> Was it 1984 the first one came out? And then 2013 mm. was the next edition. And they have it all figured out and restored the Bible to the way it should be. And then they still get things wrong and have to have new light because they don't understand the scriptures. Sure. And doesn't God say that he will bring a strong delusion on people? Oh, they're, they're very delusional. They're oh, definitely, yeah. and and it also says that someone <laughs> someone that tells you a prophecy and it doesn't come right, we're not we're not supposed to Deuteronomy 18, to, yeah. yeah. We're not supposed and to listen. So Luke 21, 8 says that as well. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. If, if, well, if anyone out there that's listening is in the process of wanting to leave or and waking up and, yeah and or you're still in it and you're like uncertain or you just left do you have any um like advice that you would want to give them to possibly think about before leaving like like what do you think i think the way I went was I looked at what Jesus actually taught in the Bible and saw if they lived up to that standard because he spoke of the Father. He didn't give a name. He didn't call him Yahweh. He didn't. He said the Father. Um, so there's a possibility that they're different. So it's worth looking into, and I would follow what Jesus said. Um, because after all, it's called Christianity and he is Jesus Christ. So it kind of makes sense to follow what he was saying. Mm -hmm. um, that's what really helped me. And was once I saw it, like, you don't have to be afraid. Don't be afraid of them. I mean, it's going to be difficult if you have family in there and you know, it's gonna be very difficult. The the shunning, the mm -hmm. just the mind control. I lost all mind. the people that talked to me in there. They don't talk to us anymore. But whatever. Was, I mean, what are you gonna do? I lost all my family going in there, and then and now that I'm out, they they won't talk to me. So it's like lose lose. But you've got plenty of people that um. There are people out here and around that will definitely. You know they're here for you. They they understand what you're going through. We've been through it. There's other people that have been through it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was leaving. She stayed in it, and I didn't really know what was going to happen. But I couldn't, in my heart, stay in something that I knew was absolutely wrong. And to you know to try to con somebody else to come into it, and then they're like mentally trapped in this religion mm -hmm. cult um and they've just been in there so long they're for, foregoing their lives they're yeah like opportunities in life and, and like oh we're gonna wait till the new system wait till the new system that's that's insanity like you're here now alive live down yeah um they're still buying buildings right and if the world's going to end any second, why why buy a building? You'll just have it for free. So it really doesn't make sense. The things they're telling you to put off, they'll go and do. 
Yeah, that back. doesn't make Take sense. your wife back. Don't, don't, you don't have to give it to her. There's people out there for you. And before we go, is there anything else that you want to share about your experience that we haven't touched on? I guess I'm grateful that the uh, the pandemic happens. Me too. I said that because mm -hmm. it really. I I think that because we didn't have to like keep doing too much, or you know, it kept us really from being out in field service and and things like that, mm -hmm. where you we would have had more group indoctrination mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, so I'm super grateful for that because it gave me time to like actually research them and yeah find out I didn't really want to be there because it's a bunch of lies. Yeah. And like I don't have that in my heart to go do that to people. All I want is all I wanted was to find a relationship with God. I've always known that, that God was real. I just wanted to know what was in the Bible for myself, learn how to research in the Bible, learn how to understand what it was saying. And now that I can and figured out like how to do it on my own, I don't need anyone except for Jesus. Like I don't need anyone. Cause if I, as if I have any questions, I just ask God. <laughs> I just ask God and I just, he brings scriptures to my mind and he answers them through the scriptures. So. I mean, since I left, I've been blessed because mm -hmm. I did the right thing in my heart. Mm -hmm. oh. And they said, you don't get blessed. Oh, you Cause, get away. Because Jehovah's yeah. not going to be with us. You'll believe me. Blessed. Yeah. Um, you definitely get blessed. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, you get yeah, blessed I, I with was, like peace and yeah, yeah. I was miserable mm -hmm. and I didn't want to be part of it and it just after I left it I felt weird for a couple of days and slowly came out of it and I'm so much better off now um yeah. definitely way more at ease uh less stressed and I don't feel like I'm disappointing God every day yeah be, you know, and I did the right thing. I know I did the right thing in my heart. So that's what he wants for me. I did, and he blessed me. Well, I want to thank you. Um, you know, I want to thank you for sharing your experience with everyone that's watching. And, you know, you guys can leave comments if you want. If you have any other questions for us, please leave a comment. Well, I don't mind answering them at all. Um, um, and then sorry for my dogs in the back over here <laughs> being crazy. That's what they do. Well, God says to, you know, multiply. <laughs> They're trying to do that. Um, <laughs> so we hope you have a blessed day and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.